so we don't have any viewers yet. I'll tell you when we have a viewer. Okay. This is always the frustrating part. That's okay. They said that we're now live. I see it says on air. Yeah. So that's good. So let me share the Hangout out. It always seems to take a little bit of time, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a bit of a challenge. <coughs> Some events everyone just jumps in on this one it's it because they never know if it's going to be geared straight at teachers or at something else it's harder to tell and like I said hangouts have been broken most of today hmm. uh, Wow well when Google breaks things they break them thoroughly so we have three viewers now okay so you want to go ahead and get started yeah. <laughs> four they're coming up in number <laughs> Great. We well, hi everybody. Um, this is Learning Space, Cosmo Quest's weekly hangout about learning, um, informal and formal education, astronomy, science, all kinds of things like that. My name is Georgia Bracey. I'm a formal education lead for Cosmo Quest, um, and I'm here today with Pamela Gay, all the way on the other side there, um, who is sort of the uh, chief person in charge of Cosmo Quest. And um, also Mike Simmons, who is with Astronomers Without Borders. And we're going to talk today about Global Astronomy Month. So I think first, um, I don't know, Pamela, if you want to give a little better introduction to yourself, then, I, <laughs> yeah, then we'll have Mike. Well, today I'm just here as the producer for this You're show. So I'm going to be the one things. who's uh, sitting here sniffling through allergy season and uh, ferreting out all of your questions, which you can leave for us by either tweet tweeting with the hashtag learning space or by leaving us a comment either on the event page or on the YouTube page where you may be watching this. Um, but other than that, I am the paper pusher, cat herder, and occasional programmer of Cosmo Quest, and I'm just glad to get to join in today and be a substitute for noisy astronomer Nicole Gallucci who's on her way down to the National Science yes. Teachers Association meeting. Yes, she'll have lots of good things to share with us when she comes back. And Pamela does all those critical behind-the-scenes things that, um, without which everything would just fall apart. So we love her for that. So uh, Mike Simmons, welcome. Why don't you go ahead and give everybody a little introduction about yourself, and then we'll kind of jump in. Thanks, Georgia. Well, I, I'm the founder and, and the current president of Astronomers Without Borders, and that's the organization that, among other things, all year organizes and runs uh, Global Astronomy Month, and uh, Global Astronomy Month is a follow-on from 100 Hours of Astronomy, which is a huge event during the International Year of Astronomy, and it was so much fun to get everybody together. <laughs> Astronomers Without Borders really does this all the time, and we decided we couldn't let that, the first anniversary of 100 Hours of Astronomy, go by without something to build on it. So we did that with Global Astronomy Month, and that's grown into something of a monster with 30 or 40 programs every year and uh, so it's it's going on now. Okay, wonderful. We actually had you on the show a few weeks ago to sort of mm -hmm. uh, prepare everybody for this wonderful month. Um, so today we're going to see how things are going so far and if there's a few programs um, you want to highlight and talk about, we'll do that too. And then of course take people's questions and see what other folks are doing to celebrate Global Astronomy Month. So um, Mike, is there anything you want to start out with or tell us anything interesting going on so far? Well, there are a lot of interesting things going on. The usual, of course, is the observing programs. Um, we have uh, <coughs> Jupiter Watch was uh, was a big event, and Sunday, which just went by when everybody focuses on the sun, literally. Uh, the Global Star Party coming up on April 20th. And these are events where we want everybody to join in, um, and take pictures, and share with everyone else around the world what you're doing. And in fact, I have some pictures here. If we have time, I'll show you some of those things yeah. as well. But for those who don't have a star party going on near them or an astronomy club to join in, we have the uh, remote observing program, which has uh, kicked off with the Messier Marathon. Uh, it was actually d delayed for weather until last night. I have to say I missed it, so I don't know if it went off this time or not. 
but there are great uh, programs there that people can join in on from anywhere in the world, chat with other people there, ask questions of the astronomer. These are they're fantastic, fun programs. Right now, in particular, we're, we're in the midst of International Dark Sky Week, and uh, that's uh, uh, in conjunction with the International Dark Sky Association, and this is a very, very important uh, time, which is getting an awful lot of attention, really, which is, is great, to make people aware of the problems of light pollution, not only for us astronomers, we're not in this alone, but everybody's in it together. It's a problem for, we're learning more about all, all the time about how it's a, a problem for people's health, as well as wildlife and many other things. And, but, you know, most of us just want to bring the stars back. You know, it's, it's, this yeah. is the first century that people have not gone outside and looked up and seen the Milky Way, and most of the world just doesn't even seem to know what it is anymore. Uh, we have, uh, we show photographs of the night sky the way it looks, and people say, well, why does it look like that? So they're completely disconnected. It's like never seeing a tree or something. It's a part of our environment that people never forget. So I think right now, uh, International Dark Sky Week and Globe at Night, which is a great program for uh, measuring the, uh, let's see, I think it's going on, it's, uh, first campaign might have just ended, there's another campaign at the end of the month for okay. measuring uh, dark sky, the brightness of the sky in your area, it's a citizen science project we want everybody in on. Um, you know, I want to mention one more thing, um, then I'll give somebody else a chance here, but the, what's really new this year is the Astro Art Program. And this isn't just about painting pictures of space. There are some really acclaimed uh, uh, astronomy and space artists involved in this. But there are many new things going on. Um, and uh, th there is astro poetry, which has been very popular. But also we have a number of screenings of films with panels. Uh, this is like a mini film festival. And, and I in particular want to mention on Friday, uh, the showing uh, the screening of Overview. This is from the Overview Institute and uh, based on the Overview Effect, uh, a book, a very important book by Frank White. And it isn't just that it's screening because it, it's available to see on Vimeo. Uh, it, it's, it's had 1.7 million views already and it's going up because it's really a very important, spectacular, uh, entertaining film. But we'll have a panel, including Frank White himself, uh, Edgar Mitchell, who walked on the moon, a couple of other astronauts, so people who can really talk about this, and that's what it brings to it. We have too many things going on all the time where we individually take a look at things or watch something online. So, so we're working to try and do this together, sort of bring the community back to it. And live interactive programs like that, where you can ask questions of the astronomers and and astronauts, um, you know, it's something that uh, we don't get online quite as much. We want to try and bring that to everybody. That's great. Mike, can you tell us how to um, access that? You said it was this Friday? That's this there Friday. Is a website you can point us to? Or right. I well, want to talk about your own website, too, as well. Where and, and I am adding all of the links as, as quickly as I can into the comments for this event page. So if you go to the Excellent. event page, that's where all the URLs will awesome. be. Okay. Great. And uh, so, yeah, and, and I want to point everybody to our website because that's where you can find the schedule for everything. And the simple link to the Global Astronomy Month or GAM uh, website is GAM, G like Georgia, A, M like Mike, uh, dash, AWB for Astronomers Without Borders .org. and there's a link right on the front page for the program schedule and there you'll find the schedule of everything and also broken down by different types of programs so you can check it all out from there. It's, it's such a large array of programs we, we really have to try and organize it but uh, you'll, you'll see it all there. Yeah, that's quite a task, too, because you do have a huge, huge array of things going on for the whole month. And you guys are really all about um, people getting together and experiencing these things together um, worldwide. I mean, Astronomers Without Borders, that's what they're all about. Um, so it's all about sharing lots of great opportunities to get out and um, either face-to-face -face community with this, or as you say, if you don't have something going on near you, 
um, go virtual and go to the website, see what you can find, see if there's something going on, and I'm sure there will be somewhere in the world, and you can you can join in that way. Right. Yeah, there, there is a lot that's happening, and a lot of it is online uh, and can be enjoyed there or, or pointing to something else. There are events that are registered on our website, and what, what happens quite often is that people make their plans. There are a lot of people that make a big deal out of this, a lot of clubs around the world. I can show you some, some photographs. But, you know, they make their plans, and they don't register on, on our site necessarily. So uh, sometimes you have to look for the local clubs or something like that. But, you know, we, we've got a lot on there about what the programs are. So uh, you should be able to, to find plenty there. And, and Astronomy Cast is a part of what you're doing. We're still working to figure out activities for Moon uh, during the last part of the month because that part always ends up being last minute for us. But we are co-hosting the uh, various hangouts that you're doing with your Astro Art program. And Georgia and I are going to be out there celebrating Yuri's Night as part of GAM at our local custard stand. And we're stupidly proud that we get to go get <laughs> custard and get optics sticky at the same time. <laughs> and, and thank you, Pamela, for uh, catching my oversight, which as soon as he came back on the screen, I said, oh, goodness, I have to mention that. But <laughs> we have a lot of partners that we work with, and, uh, and it's sometimes hard in the midst of everything to remember to acknowledge them all at the moment. But CosmoQuest is a major partner. Pamela, who, who seems to belittle her job as producer, is the most important person in that because <laughs> she's going to produce these hangouts, and they're not, the, you know, Pulling them off well is not that simple. This is something we wanted to do, things like this more interactive for a long time. And until I, I managed to twist Pamela's arm uh, into getting CosmoQuest to do it for us, uh, it just wasn't happening. So it, that's one of the things that we do, both in GAM and in, in, uh, all year in general in Astronomers Without Borders, is partner with people to, to bring our resources together and make things happen that aren't going to happen if we're, we're not working together. Yeah, we, we're very proud that we get to be part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And this this is our home, and you are much more out in the field interacting with real human beings instead of virtual human beings. And it's, it's just been an amazing experience to get to bridge what we're both so good at. And that's one of the things that's so great about the partnerships that we all do is we're finding ways to survive in times of economic crisis and to not only survive but thrive and bring new projects out by finding who's the best and how do we partner to mm -hmm. create things we didn't know how to do on our own. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say most, but I wouldn't be surprised if most of the Global Astronomy Month programs are partner programs where they have the program, we sort of bring the worldwide audience uh, together, we can make it into something that highlights people for the month of April. Now, you know, some people get the idea that that's what we do is once a year we have this big yeah. event. And we have things going on all year, and, and uh, I'm certain that CosmoQuest and us are going to continue on maybe a little less uh, uh, ambitious schedule to do things like this <clears throat> through the rest of the year. But uh, that, that's kind of what it's all about, connecting people together to make things happen, but also to share things with each other. And uh, we do have on our site um, blogs for everybody that joins, and you can join for as little as zero dollars, though we, <laughs> so that everybody in the world can do it, because mm -hmm. most of the world wouldn't be able to otherwise. But we hope that people will support us through a supporting membership as well. And people can blog about what they do there. Once again, of course, most of them put it on our Facebook page. Okay. But the idea <laughs> is they're sharing with each other. And then they talk to each other and learn about each other. So, yeah, when you're, when you're ready, I'll share some of those, so those things, too, so you can see how this is really global. And, and we would like to remind everyone, if you have any questions about either how to get involved or uh, what are various things that are going on or anything in general about Global Astronomy Month, uh, you can go ahead, ask those questions on our YouTube page, on uh, Twitter using the hashtag learning space, no spaces, mm -hmm. and uh, also on the event page. We are monitoring all three of those. Great. Mike, go back real quick to the, the poetry and the art. Um, are those programs that anybody can get involved in right now, or is it... Um, 
I mean, can someone, if they have a poem or they're if they're working on a picture, or is that something they can go ahead and, and send in and sort of get that up there, or is this something that is you know already sort of in place and now you're looking yeah. at entries and things? Well, that that's a good question. Uh, in the, in fact, there is an astro poetry blog all year. Uh, people oh, can yeah. submit things to the astro poetry blog editor. Our our okay. Astronomers Without Borders Poet Laureate, we call him, and uh, those that uh, are, are chosen uh, get featured on the blog. And there are other astro poetry, I have to say astro poetry was one of those things where I said, astro poetry blog, okay, whatever. And it just turned out to be hugely popular. So. <laughs> I, I love being wrong in that direction. <laughs> well, there's been try. some amazing haikus. As as I mean, it, it's amazing all the diversity of things that are coming in, and so you have the, this fabulous combination of full length prose, just a few syllables, and then coupled with all of the amazing imagery that comes into your site with projects mm -hmm. like the World at Night. Yeah, and and what's fascinating about this is that then it's not about poetry. It's not about space. It's about how we see our place in the universe. Mm -hmm. It's about awareness. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of, of things that I find really fascinating. And uh, there are haikus and quite often with pictures. Now, so people can submit those to the Astro Editor or whatever. They, they have to find the link on our page because <laughs> I don't use it. But right now during GAM, there is the second annual, I'm sure it will continue, Astro Poetry Contest. And uh, this has generated a lot of really good entries. And there are three different divisions for adults, for young adults and for children. Right. There are some amazing things that have developed. And people can submit what seems to be very popular is haiku with a picture, with a photograph, which to me sort of makes it more accessible. And uh, there have been some really interesting ones. So that one you can get involved in. Now the screenings and so on are, are hangouts so like this. You can submit questions to the people who are involved on it. And there are some very interesting artists uh, who are presenting things, a wide variety of things going on there. <clears throat> and so you can uh, uh, participate in that directly as well. Okay, great. Well, I was I was thinking as a teacher, I was thinking if I still, I'm not in the classroom anymore, and I sometimes miss that very much, but I'm thinking, you know, what can my students do to get involved in this? And so, as you mentioned, the haiku is is a great, we used to do that all the time. I used to teach fifth grade, and, and they can do that, you know, and you can get some very interesting and sometimes emotional um, poetry. Um, just by you know that nice short form and then again yes with a picture as is I think traditional with haiku I could be wrong it's, there yeah, it's but um, another... that goes very well and that would just be a great thing for a classroom teacher to do to get you know mix that art and science together and get kids involved in it and we do have classrooms that are particularly active because of that and it's clear that the, the kids love it but there is a it is a traditional form to combine a picture with the uh, with a haiku and it's got a different name uh, in Japanese or something. Oh, Can okay. I show you one that uh, we yeah. we didn't okay. solicit? Yeah. We've just featured. Yeah, I want to show you this one. Uh, where is it on here? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Got to look for it again. One thing that's fun with 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 haiku is is tweeting haiku and seeing how long it takes people to figure out what you're doing. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I remember you did that. How many? That was a while ago. Yeah. Is the haiku I, less than one forty? See, I don't. Yeah. Can you get the whole one in there? Fun. So I'm sharing one here that is a haiku written by someone who also took the photograph that you see there. If you can put that up. Wow. Yeah, this is by Chris Hartfield, one of the astronauts from Canada, who's yes. currently the commander of the International Space Station. That's right. For those of you who can't read it, it says, fly so high so fast, 16 sunrises each day, count my lucky stars. <laughs> Which I actually quite like. 
And uh, is that does that come up on the big screen there? Is yes, it's up right now on the big screen. For everyone oh, else. it is. Okay, so I'm not seeing it. So. Okay, <laughs> that's good. So you know, that's the kind of thing you can that's get. Um, uh, I was impressed by that, but there are some equally impressive ones by people who are stuck here on Earth with the rest <laughs> of us. Too. I just thought that was neat. Well, quite exciting when we saw it. Do you have some classrooms participating, Mike, sort of as a whole group, or are you just seeing kids of all ages? I, there are classrooms. There's uh, one teacher in particular, uh, Christine Reuter. I call her out by name, and uh, she she gets her kids involved. She's, uh, I believe, she's actually writing a new poem each day here, and we're we're doing similar things. There are a lot of people who are getting into this and just doing it on their own because they love it. And so uh, she she had some prize winners in her classroom uh, last year, and uh, so there are those who who really bring that extra dimension to their classroom. And one of the things that's really awesome about what you're doing with Global Astronomy Month is it's not just astronauts participating. It's not just amateur astronomers participating. You truly have a broad spectrum of all of our society all across the planet where you do have the astronauts but you also have the artists, the poets, the writers, the painters, the photographers, the amateur astronomers, the professional astronomers. We truly are one community with a diversity of skills, origins, ethnicities and we're all sharing one sky. That's one of the things <coughs> Excuse me. That's one of the things that surprised me about how this has evolved, Astronomers Without Borders. That looking back, I feel I shouldn't have been surprised at. But we go about it in our own field, and think of astronomy as astronomy. It's science. We we reach out to the public. We show them uh, things about that, and it's inspirational and so on. But then it's like we're 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 all in different rooms and with paper thin walls. And we don't notice anybody in the other room, and they're doing the same kind of a thing, but from a different perspective. And when we come together, uh, it's really fascinating. So, uh, as I said before, I never envisioned all of these things happening together, but it has been very rewarding to see that happen. Um, you know, in most of the world, astronomy and space science, space exploration, are not separated like they are here in the U.S., like we're used to them. They're part of the same thing, which seems perfectly natural. Um, but we do a lot of engineering and things like that. They're very specific in science, very specific to those fields. So we're not as used to that. Um, so in a way, that specialization really restricts us. And um, seeing uh, people who just simply see it from another perspective is, is great. And, and it shouldn't be too surprising what we're talking about here is not something else. We're, we're on a planet in space. This is our backyard. Mm -hmm. This is where we are. And some people draw pictures of it. And some people, <laughs> you know, garden. And some people do other things. But it's just as universal as the idea of botany or anything else is. In fact, we, we all have it in common. We see the same sky. Mm -hmm. Oh. Pamela, we can't hear you. Sorry, I mute, oh. muted my microphone. I'm sniffling with allergies and you didn't need to hear that. Um, so one of the things that I'm really loving is, is as this Hangout goes on, I, I'm seeing that Project Oxcart, which is a great username, is saying hello from London, UK. We have Marciela Souza saying hello from Brazil. Uh, we've had people, uh, Wolfgang Dunker, saying hello from Mott's Observatory, which I believe is in Germany. So wow. just as Global Astronomy Month celebrates the world, this Hangout is bringing in the world to talk about it, and that's kind of awesome in itself. But ask questions, guys. I can see you <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. I'm, I'm glad just to see it. One of the things when I do get the chance to literally hang out with people on the online uh, remote uh, observing sessions is that there's a chat box and everybody's talking to each other and they're asking questions and they're going, wow, that's neat. And, and, they ask. and then sooner or later somebody says, where's everybody? <laughs> and then the, the countries that start going through there, it could just as easily be Somalia, it's Belgium, and, and you know, it, it sort of doesn't make any difference. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go to a star party and it's dark and you don't know who you're talking to in the morning. You can't even recognize them. They're just, their voices in the dark. 
So it really doesn't make any difference. We we all see this the same, and uh, we um, uh, you know it's 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 kind of anonymous in that respect. Now, one of the things that that I know you do is you do your own version of the virtual star party that's quite different from the the chaos filled. Oh my God, what's that version of this virtual star party that we do here at CosmoQuest? And yeah, I'd yeah. love it if you could explain to our listeners how yours is so different and it's really something kind of special. Well, the, these are the online ones uh, that I'm referring to, and those are run by Dr. Gianluca Massi in uh, Italy. He has his own observatory, but he's an astrophysicist. He's a really good uh, uh, astrophotographer, but knows his research well, too. And it's uh, it, yours are great because people are literally hanging out, and it's a star party. There are different telescopes, and it's like when you're at a star party and says somebody says, "Hey, I've got you know M13 over here. You can go over <laughs> and take a look at it." You know. Yep. And uh, the only thing that Google can't do for us yet is let us share coffee with each other. But otherwise, we can do pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what jean Luca does is he basically invites everybody into his observatory. And you're looking over his shoulder. He shares the screen. So when he moves the telescope and when mm -hmm. he takes an image. But it, the Messier Marathon, for example, you can tune in. And you don't have to stay up all night. You can just see that part of it. Uh, he has other programs. Well, let's see what he's let's see what he's got on store for for this <laughs> month. Um, Walking on the moon that's coming up on the 18th. Stars for all uh, around the ring planet. Got to be Saturn. Uh, cosmic depths will close out the um, the month. But I've seen him do some really neat things as well uh, that are different using photometry, for example. Um, one that I got to enjoy, he did a uh, observation of an exoplanet transit. So he was posting in real time the results uh, of photometry, and you could see the curve form, and you could watch the light dip as the wow. planet went in front of the, the other star. This yes. is one of those really amazing things that's now possible. I know Peter Lake with iTelescope has done the same thing. It's now possible sure. with these amateur level telescopes to stream out to the public new worlds orbiting alien stars. And that's just not something that we imagined when we were kids, that's for sure. No, no, definitely not. And it is amazing. It's just a way of sharing with everyone. And, it, and it's exciting because, you know, the difference between watching a movie by yourself and watching with a group of people who respond, that's what it's like because the people are there, they're chatting, and you see their responses. Yeah. So it's great fun. So I've brought up the page of all of your logos so that we can go through the diversity of everything amazing that's going on. So if you want to talk us through all of these different things, it would be kind of great. Okay. And what's cool is is because this is a global program that everyone can participate in, you have put all of your logos online. And we can quite happily go through and we zoom in a little bit. And I have to say, we unfortunately, as things as things happen, like on your Hangout sometimes, we get, get started a little late. And we got started a little late with this. What we usually do and will do uh, next year, uh, we have... Jessica Santoskoy, who's who is formerly with the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and people in the U.S. know her for part, her uh, management of the Night Sky Network. But uh, she's really sort of gotten us all into shape, us, us slackers, and I'm sure we'll be in better shape next year. But usually we put those logos out there and say, people provide us with translations of these. We make up the logos and make them available. And 100 Hours of Astronomy, had dozens of them in all kinds of languages. So that's uh, something we would ordinarily have here. Okay, so... So we have, we've already talked about the overall project and Dark Skies Awareness, the Global Star Party, but we haven't heard about this cosmic concert yet. That's, that's something, I don't even know how that came about. It's just these things just happened. But uh, Giovanni Renzo is a, a composer in Italy. And he is doing every year now the Cosmic Concert, which is an online live presentation of a, an original composition, which he does every year. 
and he combines that with a tremendous background of, of uh, images like what you mentioned from the world at night and others like that. Mm. And so it's sort of like expanding on the haiku with pictures idea. So it's, it's a visual uh, feast and this new composition is always wonderful. And it, that will be online live uh, April 28th. And then it will be recorded after that, but sure. you want to see it first. Oh, it sounds and bad. live, you can you don't have to worry about spoilers. That's right. <laughs> so then the next thing we have is a series of planet watches. We mm -hmm. have Saturn watch, Jupiter watch, Moon watch, and then you already mentioned Sunday. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Moon Watch is one that spans pretty much the entire month, but what's going on with Saturn Watch and Jupiter Watch? I know these are our twilight objects at the moment. Yes, they are. And, and the idea there, we, it's not as organized a program per se. Uh, we just want people to focus on those particular things. So people around the world know, you know, if they want to see Saturn, there will be an event where they can see Saturn during that time. And the same for Jupiter. Uh, there are more things that we can do, and in fact, there is a uh, a new partnership, very last minute partnership with Discover the Cosmos in in, in Europe, uh, which allows people who are taking pictures of these planets at those times to uh, submit them, and and do some interesting things with them. It's an educational uh, project, so you can see on those pages. But uh, there may be more for that. But those are just the days where we just want to bring awareness of those and. You know, when you get out the word to people to say Saturn's coming up, that, that's enough to draw a crowd. Mm -hmm. Moonwatch is a little different, and th that's got a lot more to it. And what we have on the page right now is really referring to some other places. This was a sort of a late arrival by our uh, U.S. national coordinator, uh, Peggy Walker, who is also the coordinator of all our national coordinators around the world and uh, active with international um, uh, sidewalk astronomers, uh, John Dobson's group, and mm -hmm. sort of really the outreach person. They, on the sidewalks, front lines, guerrilla astronomy type person. And she put together really a fantastic program. Uh, and it, there's less of it on the page now. It refers to other places that have great suggestions about what you can do at these different times and looking for different objects at different times. This is going to involve, evolve into a really great program the whole month next year when we can feature it more. Just a little late coming up. I mean, we, we can't, you know, we set a cutoff for things and then people come up with great things. And, and I, I'm the worst offender. I just, <laughs> I get excited. I can't say no. So it, it happens. I think I drive the other people crazy, but I can't help myself. And what have we got? Okay, so Globe at Night, and is that Lyrid Watch? I'm seeing it. That's Lyrid Watch. You got lucky enough that there's also a pretty good meteor shower this month. That's right. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a good one. It's a time uh, too to focus on let people know what meteor uh, showers are about, which is not a shower of meteors necessarily, but they're still fascinating. Uh, it's something that people are a lot interested in now because of our close calls a couple times recently, and uh, there's a lot of focus on uh, meteors and small asteroids these days. Mm. And it's another observational thing. It's a good time to, you know, and it is the time, and it's the only time of the month, so it's a good time to focus on, on meteors then. Good educational opportunities this year, for sure. Absolutely. And so then I think these are your final two. You have your online observing, which we've discussed, but then also 30 nights of star peace, which at a certain level is at the core of everything that you're doing. It really is, and this is a partner program. It is basically about as uh, central to Astronomers Without Borders as it could be, but it's actually organized by another organization, and that's Star Peace. Star Peace was founded during the International Year of Astronomy in 2009 by uh, mostly students in Iran, which is a country I, I go to quite often, actually. I was there a few, a few months ago for a great, uh, great uh, regional star party. And uh, what they wanted to do is to get people to come together to observe physically at the borders of different 
countries. And there have been star parties arranged at the border between India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't get very close to it. They were close enough to be able to see each other and could talk to each other on the cell phone. But the armies on both sides didn't let them get any closer than that. Wow. Uh, I think there might have been one with Iraq and Iran. These are, you know, uh, traditional enemies. I mean, they yeah. fought wars with each other. And so 30 Nights of Star Peace is a little bit different. It, and if there are club members here, I really want to encourage you to look at that. This is, this is a great program. This is about having people observing together, quite literally, with an online connection like we're having right now. And what's been done... It's to break up the world into 30 sections, like time zones, right. 30 strips <laughs> of longitude, and, uh, uh, and I'm sorry, it isn't 30 different ones. There are 30 nights, there are 10 longitude zones. And during that time, we encourage people to uh, get connected with other clubs such as North and South America, uh, Europe and Africa, things like this, and observe together. Usually it's a public outreach event, and you can be online by Skype or something else, which is a fantastic thing if you have this, uh, uh, you know, a monitor there and people from the public come and they see these are the people doing the same thing right now in another place around the world. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's really quite exciting. And to share everybody with everybody what they did. Now, this we haven't gotten as much participation as this one really deserves. Mm. And uh, we're going to uh, try to focus on this more next year. But You really uh, need this, clubs to be involved for this one, right? It's not so clubs. much an individual as, as a club. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we do this for clubs. Now, we do have hundreds of affiliates, which is groups, mostly astronomy clubs, who are members, mm -hmm. and we'd like all of the groups uh, out there to, to join us. Again, you can join for free and get the mailings and see what things are going on like like Star Peace. But uh, this is there I go, pulling my earpiece out once again. I told you I'd do that. And uh, so uh, we really want to get the clubs involved mm -hmm. this way. And, and I, I have to share this comment that we, we have, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce your name. I think it's Gaida Bibra. He, he comments a lot. We love him. I have no clue how to pronounce his name. Uh, he, he writes, the public may all share the same sky, but fortunately we don't all share the same weather. So far, April skies have not been very forthcoming here in Germany. At least we were able to get a peak of Jupiter one time. So this is a reminder. Sometimes you have to go to other nations and share other skies to get at the sky. Well, that, that's right. Yeah, I mean, that's what it, it helps to have friends in other places uh, when you do this kind of thing. And sometimes people uh, uh, have events, and, and I'm working with some people right now, they're going to have a big star party. And they said, well, can we get somebody somewhere else in the world to show us the sky if it's cloudy here? So <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a good option. And there I go again. Well, oh, that's always an issue, but it's interesting. Um, I, you know, was always really wanting perfect skies to go out and observe or at an event. And even now, thinking about Erie's night this Friday, I'm kind of, I'm getting a little worried already about the weather and all because it's been beautiful, of course, so far this week. And now, you know, it's looking like it might go downhill. But I will say that last year at Erie's night, we did not have perfect weather or perfect sky by any means, but still we had people come out and it was hazy, it was, and we we're fortunate, I believe, we had Venus up in the sky. We did have something we were kind of waiting to appear, you know, that was really bright. And, and people were still amazed by that and people were still gathered around the telescopes and talking about observing and looking at the sky and sharing stories and, and you know, it was still a great event. So even though I hope for that perfect sky on these occasions, you know, I've learned that, you know, you make the most out of what you, what you get. And then ideally, yeah, you've got some technology that might be able to help you out and take a peek at what someone else is doing who's more fortunate weather-wise. Well, people are always fascinated about astronomy. And, you know, we have conversations with people in hallways at work and all kinds of places, <laughs> explaining to them what's going, yeah. what they heard about in the news. And that's without a telescope. The telescope is, is great, and there's no replacement for it. Uh, but, uh, but there's still plenty of interest when people come out. 
Yep, and you know, the kids were really excited about using the telescope to look at like an uh, uh, interesting sign down the street. You know, so even yes. if you can't point it at something up, you can point it at something down the street, a tree or whatever, and you know what, the kids are still, you know, thrilled with that, and you can show them, you know, what a telescope does. So sure. it still works. So time is starting to wind down at this point. Um, we've, we've really loved having you on. And I'm wondering, are there any parting thoughts for people who are maybe on the edge of starting to figure out how to get involved, whether it's going to be to go out and find local events or to perhaps host their own if there isn't a local event? What, what words of encouragement do you have for these folks? Well, most of us who've done public outreach like this for decades know that it doesn't take much to hold an event. If you take a telescope and you put it out in front of a McDonald's someplace or whatever you have in your country, okay. people will come take a look. Um, and people are fascinated by it. So uh, I would say the main thing is to just do it. If you have a telescope, uh, then do that. You know, in many countries they don't have telescopes, and they do other events instead. They have other things. They have exhibitions. They have lectures. They have presentations. I think the most fun way to participate is to hold an event of some kind. It share what you know, what you know how to do with other people. This is not an esoteric field. Well, it might be in some ways, but, you know, this is a part of all of us and a part of all of our lives, and people are interested, even though they know nothing about it. So share what it is that you have. That's what it's all about. And, and join with us in, in Astronomers Without Borders. We're going to have more programs where we're sharing with people, uh, pairing clubs with each other in different countries and things like that starting this summer. So uh, if you don't get a chance to do something during GAM, there, there are plenty of other opportunities. And if you'd like to learn more about how to get involved, I'd encourage all of you to follow Astronomers Without Borders on Google+, follow CosmoQuest on Google+, and you will end up getting all of the event uh, invites you could ever possibly want, as well as information on where to go to get involved. Absolutely. So our next Hangout is uh, not actually hosted by us. I'd actually encourage you, tomorrow isn't going to be a normal Planetary Science Hangout uh, with the Planetary Society this week. NASA is finding out what its upcoming budget is and releasing that information to the public. So tonight at 8 p.m., Bill Nye, the science guy, is going to be hosting a NASA budget webcast. Um, so I'd encourage you to check that out if you're concerned, as all of us are. In, in fact, if, if you'd like to help keep things moving forward, both CosmoQuest and um, Astronomers Without Borders are 501c3s that are taking donations now to make sure that as NASA's budget gets cut, all of us are able to keep communicating out the science and space information to all of you in our audience. The next CosmoQuest Hangout is going to be Friday. It's our weekly space hangout. That is going to be at 2 p.m. Central, which is 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Uh, Arizona and Pacific. And other time zones are on your own right now. We, we encourage you to use the time date calculator. Um, any part I'm impressed how you and Nicole can always rattle those off every week. <laughs> Just, it's amazing. So much going on. It's good. Um, do you want to share about the teacher professional development we have coming up, Georgia? Um, sure. We'll do a little um, a little promo here. Um, we just got NASA approval uh, for our 15-day uh, middle school lesson unit to go with Moon Mappers, which is a CosmoQuest project. Um, this is a great way to bring Moon Mappers into your classroom, um, introduce your students to citizen science. And so if you are in the Southwest Illinois or St. Louis area um, during June at all, if you'd like to come in maybe, um, we are holding professional development development one week of teacher training on how to use that unit um, you will learn how to use moon mappers uh, you will get a stipend if you're a teacher you can get CPDUs which if you're a teacher you know all about those wonderful things um, you can even get college credit we have a couple of wonderful experienced classroom teachers um, plus 
Uh, Pamela and Nicole will probably jump in and do a little bit too. So we have a great group that's going to do that. And if you are interested um, and partaking in that, it's from June 17th to the 21st. Um, again, uh, just south of Edwardsville, Illinois, southwest Illinois. So I encourage you to pass the word. And if you are interested to uh, send me an email, you can do that at educate at cosmoquest.org. Um, and of course, really, um, you can contact any of us and we'll get your questions or um, information to the right person. So um, that will be a really fun week of um, citizen science in the classroom. So, and I more of that to come uh, throughout the summer too. And I'd like to wrap this up with a final word that comes from one of our posters, mm -hmm. Selvin Vespi, on uh, the event page. Apologies if I guessed the wrong nationality to use to pronounce your, your, your name. Um, he writes, each time I'm impressed to hear from these communities of amateur astronomers in Iran and Pakistan who are frequently built up by women. There's been so much progress everywhere in the world that doesn't get credited because everyone tends to overemphasize the bad news. Well, this is your excuse to celebrate the good news, to celebrate the science, and to celebrate that we are one world sharing one sky. And Global Astronomy Month, we've got all of April. It's a long month of 31 days. So get out and look up, and uh, Comet Pan-STARRS is mostly gone. On, but uh, if you have the right telescope, you at least even have a comment left to see. So thank you, everyone. This has been Learning Space, a production of CosmoQuest, and we have been happy to host Mike Simons this week uh, to talk about uh, Global Astronomy Month. Check out Astronomers Without Borders online. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks, Mike.